CPG Gray is a YouTuber who ended up breaking one of YouTube's commandments, copyright striking another channel. If you don't know who he is, this is him, it's a stick figure with glasses. And if he sounds vaguely familiar, it's because he ended up making a viral hit, The Simple Solution to Traffic. And this is how I found him. But today I have lost a little bit of respect for him because of the way this entire situation unraveled. Now I know I'm gonna sound really mean when I say this, but CPG Gray, I hope you stub your pinky toe on the corner of a cabinet. I, that's so messed up, I should have never said that. Now let me go ahead and explain to you guys what happened, okay? So CPG Gray, he ended up striking a channel by the name of, of Vlogging Through History. However, what he did next, I don't even think Jesus Christ can forgive him. When Vlogging Through History challenged the copyright strike, CPG Gray thought it was a good idea to issue another copyright strike. Uh, WTF? Mr. Gray, have you lost your mind and do you need help looking for it? There is no way that your brain cells came together, collaborated, and developed a response like that. Here's the thing, okay? If you don't want people to react to your videos, that's fine. I have no problem with that. To copyright strike them once, I feel like that could potentially be enough. To copyright strike them a second time? All right, come on, man, what are you doing now? At that point, you're no better than Nintendo. Going to Gray's tweet about reaction channels, you can see that there's a couple of viewers and fans that are questioning his behavior and just kind of leaving tweets of their own to see if they can get an answer. Now, obviously everyone has the right to remain silent, but CPG Gray, he's abusing that privilege. Okay, here's the thing, okay? You do have the right to remain silent, but the thing is that you're kind of a social figure. So in a way, you kind of owe it to the people that you give some sort of explanation because the people are the ones who are viewing your content. People decided to give your content a chance, support you, spread your name around, give you some recognition. But to just remain silent and just kind of blue ball us, I feel like that that's quite unfair from CPG Gray. Now there's some folks on YouTube that believe that CPG Gray had every right to copyright strike him, which I think so too. I do think that he has the right to do so as well. But when your first instinct is to copyright strike him and maybe not talk it out, perhaps even leave a comment if you can't reach him directly through an email, which by the way, uh, vlogging through history, he does have an email address you can email him at. But if you couldn't reach him via email, at least you could have left a comment. And I'm sure that if you would have stated in that comment, uh, you know, I kind of don't want you to kind of react to my video. You know, just it, it's just something personal, you know. I think there would be a lot of people on YouTube, including the creator himself, I think that they would all understand and respect that decision of yours. Because when you copyright somebody, I don't know, man, that, that you kind of start to lose me. Because we already know that handing out copyright strikes, it's, it's not exactly a generous act of kindness. On a live stream, Mudahar, interestingly enough, stated that CPG Grey excessively struck the channel. I think CGP is 100% in the right here. Now, would I have absolutely struck a dude's channel two times if this was me? No. I would only strike once if I had to, to make a point. I would not strike two times because I know the third strike puts the channel into, into issues. CGP has like absolutely been excessive with the punishment. Yeah, which, yeah, I agree. However, I think that this stems from some sort of like, I, I wouldn't call it a hatred, but a very strong dislike for reaction channels when it comes to CPG Grey and reaction channels. If you take a look at CPG's tweet about reaction channels, you can see that he's empowering the negatives of reaction channels and not really giving them the best spotlight. I do wanna go ahead and highlight this important fact. Uh, reaction channels, uh, whenever they receive some sort of monetary gain, like AdSense, that monetary gain doesn't exactly go to the original creator. That's actually a myth. The reaction channels actually pocket all of that money and uh, the original creators don't exactly receive anything from it. Now, with that being known, I feel like it m gives a much more impactful meaning when Mudohar states his points about how reaction channels are bad for the creators. One of the pillars of fair use principles is if you're creating a market substitute, okay? If you are playing the entire video, why would I ever go to the original person's channel and watch the video? if I've already seen the entire video on your channel. Now, I somewhat disagree with Mudahar's point here. Reacting to a person's video, no matter how you paint it, the original creator, they're gonna lose some views. However, I think that being exposed to a new audience is much more of a worthy payout than 
just completely eliminating that avenue of traffic. Two examples that come to mind is Sneeko and Andrew Tate. They literally depended on these content creators to spread their philosophy, to showcase their videos in any way possible. I mean, take a look at that one woman, the Andrew, the Andrew Tate stand. She, she lives and breathes Andrew Tate. However, her channel really blew up when she interviewed Andrew Tate back a few months ago when he was, you know, kicking off. And because that worked for her, she apparently then decided to abandon her inquisitive nature and promising potential and make her whole channel an Andrew Tate fan channel to a degree that is so embarrassing. I don't know how she can continue to look at herself in the mirror every morning. On an unrelated note, um, an interesting phenomena of Leia's channel is that every video she does in support of Tate does astronomically well compared to most of her other videos. But calling her a one-trick pony whose career is reliant on her uncritical support of him would be a dreadfully cynical accusation. And I like to see the best in people. You know me. And because of that, he ends up developing a new avenue for traffic. But that's just one example. You know, there's content creators, reaction channels, and even channels that just take from the live stream, from Andrew Tate's live stream, and they just post that up because Andrew knows that that draws in eyes. Now, perhaps CPG Grey doesn't want any of that stuff and just kind of wants to keep to himself in that corner. I don't even think anybody would have had a problem with it. If anything, we would have respect that. The viewers will respect that. Don't underestimate the viewers. Now, I want to go ahead and talk about what reaction channels provide. Promotion, which means exposure towards a channel. There has been quite a few channels where Charlie has promoted a channel just because he's reacted to it. User experience. It's a type of media that allows lonely people to feel more connected towards someone else who also enjoys the content. And there is a ton of lonely people nowadays. So this serves as a good niche for them. Informative. Some of my favorite streamers like Destiny also provides a lot of information whenever he's reacting to a video, a certain type of video, which leads me to the next benefit, uh, a new perspective. Again, Destiny will react to a piece of media where I've came out from that piece of content with a certain perspective. And because Destiny reacted to it, he'll provide another outlook, maybe even challenge that perspective. And I'll walk away with a brand new perspective or even a combination of the two. Networking, whenever you have people reacting to your channel, that could potentially mean that there could possibly be a connection there. I mean, think about it. Like these reaction channels, they're reacting to all sorts of videos. I'm pretty sure that they've probably connected with some of those content creators. I would like to connect with that content creator, a bridge towards other content creators that I can probably get along with. Authenticity, uh, genuine laughter is so much better than acted laughter. And diversity, it just brings people together. Again, it can bring content creators together. It can bring uh, people from different backgrounds together. And I believe that that's important because oftentimes, uh, you know, we kind of, at least here in America, we tend to just kind of see a group of people from a distance rather than actually trying to connect with them. So my final thoughts, you know, I don't know why CPG Gray thought that it was a good idea to copyright strike a channel twice. Maybe he thought that somebody would toss him a fish. I don't know. I know probably some people are going to disagree with me wholeheartedly when it comes to this, but I kind of had to unsubscribe from CPG Gray anyways, because I, I just can't support that. I cannot align myself with somebody who does that. And I'm just simply stating that that's just what I am doing. I don't encourage you to do it. You take your own action. Whatever you believe is the appropriate action you do. I just can't support somebody who does questionable actions like that. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. And hopefully you guys learned something today.